It's the season of giving, and the best gift that the Jacksonville Jaguars could have gotten is a New York Jets victory. With the Jaguars currently having the number one overall pick, at least for now, would the Jets or the Jaguars be the best spot for Trevor Lawrence? The Pro Bowl rosters have been revealed, and you know what we have to do every single year. All around the NFL community, people have the conversation which players were snubbed from the 2021 Pro Bowl roster. Week 16 news and notes as well around the NFL prior to Christmas Day and much more on a brand new episode of Time to Football. Hello everyone, thank you guys for joining us for a week 16 episode. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this podcast. If you guys are joining us, whether this be revealed on uh, the day before Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve, I have no idea when I'm going to be revealing this. We are filming this on Wednesday and I will try my best to get this out prior to Christmas Eve so that you guys can join us as we premiere it on YouTube for you notification gang that you guys hit the bell icon. You get notified when this comes out and when we premiere it. And if you guys are premiering this currently, how you guys doing? Answer or ask any sort of questions that you may have in the chat and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you guys may have. It's the Fantasy Football Championship. I love this time of the year because it's Christmas. It's Christmas. It's a season of giving. Everybody has a smile on their face around this time, especially if you're in contention of winning a fantasy football championship. So if you need any sort of second opinions, don't hesitate. Ask your questions, and I'll do my best to answer back and give you my best opinion. It's Christmas. Everybody loves Christmas. I actually... I'm wearing this medium Christmas sweater that I want at a white elephant's party as well that I attended with my hot brunette wife. And it's, uh, I think it was intended for a woman because it is kind of small, but I want it, so I'm keeping it. It used to light up. There used to be little light bulbs. Actually, you can see some of them right now. Uh, but this one actually ripped out, so now I just have a big gaping hole next to my nipple area. Week 16 of the National Football League kicks off on Christmas Day with the Minnesota Vikings versus the New Orleans Saints. We're going to talk about everything with the playoff scenarios, with the news around the league, with those topics that we mentioned on the top of the broadcast. But first, you know what we have to do every single week, and that is to give the most prestigious award on this show, and that is the Hungriest Player of the Week. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. You know what I like to do with the hungriest player of the week? I like to give it to a guy that's really underrated, the guy that really stepped it up and helped lead their team to a victory, a guy that really has this cool story for that week. I don't necessarily look at the best stats because this award isn't meant for that. Instead, the hungriest player of the week goes to a man with a great feel-good story. No other man is deserving of this award than Rigoberto Sanchez, the punter of the Indianapolis Colts. We've we've already had two kickers as the hungriest player of the week this year in 2020, and now we have a punter as well. For the brand, Pat McAfee would be very proud. Reading off his stats, two punts, 45.5 yards was his average for each punt. One of those punts was inside of the 20. So you may read those stats and be like, whoa, what? why is he deserving of this award? What's the big deal? He actually had to go into, under surgery and remove a cancerous tumor inside of his body. So he removed that. And then two weeks later, he's out on the football field kicking and booming punts for the Indianapolis Colts. So that in itself is deserving. And without question, unanimous decision. Rigoberto Sanchez, the hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. Congratulations. What a story for him to come back. Week 16. Screw you, by the way. Check down for stealing my award. You're probably going to give it to Rigoberto Sanchez anyways, but hey, I beat you to it. Week 16. News and notes around the NFL. Starts off with a guy that uh, you may say wasn't really given a chance in the NFL, but now he may have an opportunity to play in the last couple games of the regular season or at least to back up, and that is Josh Rosen of the San Francisco 49ers. So formerly, he was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals, then he was traded over, traded over to the Miami Dolphins for a second-round pick, was released, signed on to the practice squad of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and now the 49ers signed 
Josh Rosen off the practice squad after that injury to Nick Mullins. C.J. Beathard is the only healthy quarterback at that point because Josh Jackson was also placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. So it's looking like Josh Rosen will be backing up C.J. Beathard for the San Francisco 49ers in the matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. Travis Kelsey, Kansas City Chiefs tight end, is 60 yards away from the single-season tight end receiving record. He's currently at 1,318 yards, and Kittle is at 1,377. That's the record that he set uh, two or three years ago. Uh, Actually, in that season as well, Travis Kelsey had 1,336, so he was second all-time for tight ends. So what a season for tight ends that was, but Kelsey, 60 yards away, just 30 more yards each game. Uh, for the next two games, and he gets that tight end record. John Elway, the head man, the macho man in uh, Denver, he stated on his thoughts on Drew Locke, what he stated about Drew Locke, we still like what we see in him and still think that he's got a chance to be a very good quarterback in this league. So it's looking like John Elway is going to stick with Drew Locke as their quarterback. That's big news for you guys that pay attention to the NFL draft, for you guys that have uh, paid attention to BYU, Zach Wilson, who's just slowly and, and every single week moving up in draft boards for people that, uh, I mean, if we were to fall, Mac Jones for Trey Lance people. But instead, it seems like that Drew Locke is going to be the man for now for John Elway and that Denver Broncos organization. Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers have not been looking great as of late the last three games. He stated that he'll talk to Juju Smith-Schuster about the TikTok dances that he's been doing on the logos. If you guys have been keeping up with that, it was a game against the Buffalo Bills and then this past week against the Cincinnati Bengals. And both games, they just did not look that great. And the score may look closer than it may be, but it's actually both games, they were, I like to say that they were not really in the game the whole entire time. So he's going to have a discussion with Juju Smith-Schuster, who's been having the dances on those logos in each stadium that he's gone to. And actually just now reported that Juju Smith-Schuster came out and said that he's going to be uh, not dancing anymore on those logos for the best interest of his team. Deshaun Watson has been fined $7,500 for COVID-19 protocols, breaking those protocols, because they opened up a restaurant recently. And inside of that restaurant, there were pictures taken, some of them, half of them, not even wearing masks. So regardless of what your thoughts are on uh, wearing masks, no mask, whatever it may be, It is what it is. Deshaun Watson has been fined $7,500. Rich McKay, the president of the Atlanta Falcons, has stated that the Falcons GM, whoever's going to be hired and take the place of Thomas Dimitrov, is allowed to move on from Matt Ryan and Julio Jones if it gets quote-unquote W's. Not out of the equation, not out of the picture of moving on with the top two offensive players on the roster. We've got clinching scenarios this week in the NFL. Let's start off with the Cleveland Browns, start off with the AFC. The Browns can clinch with a win, and if either Indianapolis, Baltimore, or Miami loses. So the odds of the Browns clinching are very, very strong. For Indianapolis, however, they need a win, plus Baltimore or Miami. One of those two teams need to lose on top of a victory that they have to have this week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. If they don't get it, it's okay. They're still in contention. These teams aren't eliminated. The Tennessee Titans, they clinch a playoff spot with a win or a Baltimore Ravens or Miami Dolphins loss. Going over to the NFC, we've got the Rams. With a win or a Chicago loss, the Rams will find themselves in the playoffs. The Arizona Cardinals with a win and a Chicago loss. They need a little bit more help. And two things need to happen for the Cardinals to clinch a spot. Tampa Bay with a win or Chicago loss. So all these teams are rooting for the Jacksonville Jaguars, it seems like, to to beat the Chicago Bears. Uh, Tampa Bay needs a win or Chicago needs to lose. And then Washington to clinch the NFC East, the dreaded NFC East. Washington has the possibility of doing that with the win this week. And on top of that, the New York Giants have to lose. A lot of clinching scenarios prior to week 16. Just reading off those clinching scenarios, you got a lot of teams rooting against the Chicago Bears. You got the Rams, you got the Cardinals, you got the, the Buccaneers, because all these teams want to clinch and get into the NFL playoffs. However, one team, or at least one fan base that may be rooting for the Bears, except the Chicago Bears themselves, may be their opponent, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are currently in position to have the number one overall pick. Juicy stuff. With that loss, 
from the Rams by the New York Jets. The Jaguars are just two games away from landing Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence as their future franchise quarterback. The question is, if the Jaguars were to continue to lose and have that pick, or maybe even if the Jaguars were to pick up just one more victory and the Jets continue to lose, what would happen with Trevor Lawrence? What would be the best option for Trevor Lawrence in his NFL career? I just want to say I'm excited. If this stands that the Jaguars are going to draft Trevor Lawrence, I'm excited. I really am. Just a better organization than the Jets. Couldn't imagine a much better opportunity and position for a team that's, uh, you know, kind of sort of in the bottom, but maybe just one, two, three, yeah, maybe four pieces away from being a good winning organization. But quarterback is one of those pieces. And Trevor Lawrence getting a a once-in-a-lifetime generational player, people comparing him to someone like Andrew Luck, the best prospect to come out since Andrew Luck. This is huge for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I think it's huge for the for Trevor Lawrence in his NFL career as well. Before we get much more in-depth on the exact pieces that the Jaguars have, let's talk about the scenario of if Trevor Lawrence went to the New York Jets, what could happen? A lot of people were saying that maybe Trevor Lawrence needs to pull what Eli Manning did with the San Diego Chargers. Say, hey, I don't want to be part of this organization. I feel like I could win more with this organization right over here. Trade me. Trade me away, or I'm going to sit out, or whatever it may be. Yes, it may be a little bit of a douchey move on the part of Trevor Lawrence and his agent and everything else in between, but I feel like that that would have been the best opportunity is for Trevor Lawrence to become a Jacksonville Jaguar, and it's becoming more and more realistic of that happening. Doug Marone, who could be the next head coach for Trevor Lawrence. This is what he said on losing on purpose so that he can land Trevor Lawrence as their quarterback. That's right. The media... Loves to ask some interesting questions just to get inside of the mind of these coaches and players. This is what Doug Marone had to say on losing on purpose. I wouldn't do that. I couldn't do it. I just wouldn't. I've never done that with anything in my life. Hey, have you ever done that? I had trouble letting my kids win when they were little. Okay, so first of all, you're a terrible father, by the way. That's a side story. That's you know different topic. But Doug Marone not letting his kids win says that he just wants to win. And he doesn't like to lose. I don't think any coach or any player when they play a game has a mentality of thinking of the future and thinking, oh, we have to lose this game. We have to lose for the sake of the Jaguars organization. No, they don't care. All they care about is themselves. They care about they care about being on that team. They care about winning. They care about performing well. So they can stay with that team and provide a living for themselves and their family. That's it. That's just how it is. So the Jaguars are going to play their best against Chicago. And then the following week, the Jaguars are going to play their best against the Indianapolis Colts. They don't care about losing. No one cares. Except the front office. The front office, including Shad Khan and the other front office staff. And I feel like that's the same thing with the Jacksonville Jaguars and with the New York Jets. The Jets doing the most Jets thing that they could possibly do and win at the wrong time. And Trevor Lawrence, more than likely, I, I believe I read it was something around 60%, 65% chance that the Jaguars hold on to the number one overall pick. Just because of that one win. Because of that one win against the Rams. The Jaguars are the best option for Lawrence. The Jaguars moved on from Fournette, but they found a backup and a replacement in James Robinson. Talk about another guy with attitude problems at the running back position. Compare that to New York Jets. Releasing Le'Veon Bell. But however, they don't find a replacement for the running back position. No one really stepped up. That says a lot about the organization in itself. The Jaguars have better receivers. DJ Chark, D.D. Westbrook, who tours ACL. Hopefully he's going to recover by the start of next season. Keelan Cole, LaVisca Chenault versus Jamison Crowder, Brashad Perriman, Denzel Mims. Out of those opportunities, out of those receivers, out of that offense, kind of like the Jaguars being the best spot for Lawrence. Whoever he ends up with, he needs a new head coach. With that question, a lot of rebuilding is going to be happening within these organizations. 
a lot of rebuilding is going to be happening, and you guys that are into playing Madden in franchise mode, and if he goes to the Jaguars, you guys are going to hop on the Jaguars and play franchise mode for sure. But it all starts with Trevor Lawrence as the quarterback. But leave your thoughts. Who do you guys feel like is going to draft Lawrence? Will it be the Jaguars or will it be the Jets? We're going to move on to our Pro Bowl snubs in just one second. But first, we have to tell you about Manscaped. Listen up, fellas. 2020 sucks. It's almost the new year, which means new balls with our sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, offering precision-engineered tools for your family jewels and helping 2 million men all over the world get rid of hair on their balls. If you let yourself go in 2020 while in quarantine, Manscaped is here for you to reboot and stay clean and shaved in 2021. Manscaped is here to give you a fresh start in 2021 with a perfect 3.0 and has all the right tools for the job. Come out of quarantine with clean balls thanks to the Lawnmower 3.0. This waterproof and skin safe trimmer will, will reduce nicks to your two best friends. The third generation trimmer even has a light to give you the glow up you need in 2021. It's also time to freshen up down there with this new year. The Crop Preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why aren't you putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? And for the on for the on the go freshness, you'll receive the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. 2020 was awful, so make sure your boys are refreshed and ready for new beginnings in 2021. Manscaped even threw in their shed travel bag to keep all your goodies stored comfortably when you're on the go during the holidays. Speaking of comfort, the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs are also included in our hands down the best underwear you will ever wear. A guy with hairy balls is like the year 2020. Don't be that guy. For a limited time only, the time to followers, the time to faithful. Get 20% off and free shipping when using the promo code T2FT, the number two, the letter F, at manscaped.com at checkout. Your balls will thank you. Happy New Year to your balls. The Pro Bowl 2021. There's no actual game. It's not happening. Why did we even vote for the Pro Bowl roster? I don't know. Maybe just for the records, for the the awards. That's why we voted for these players. However, there are some players, even though in this fake Pro Bowl that we're about to have, that were left out of the consideration for that Pro Bowl roster spot. A lot of players on the AFC and the NFC. Every single year, we have snubs on the Pro Bowl roster. The question is, this year, who are those snubs? What I did is I sat down, I looked at the stats, I looked at the, the individuals, and I looked at who's having the best performances this season, and I really chose and narrowed it down to eight individual players that I feel like were snubbed out of making the Pro Bowl. I'm going to name those eight players in order from eight to one and who I deserve or who I think is deserving of making the Pro Bowl the most, and also name a player that they deserve to overtake and should have gotten that spot over in that 2021 Pro Bowl. Okay, so some honorable mentions I want to mention before I get to this top eight. I want to mention Michael Dixon, the punter on the Seattle Seahawks. Great season. I get it. Understandably so why a lot of people would be upset why he didn't make the Pro Bowl. But you you have to realize that Mr. Foxy, good old Fox, and Detroit is having a great season as well as their punter. So when I name these players, I'm not really talking about oh yeah, this player should have gotten in, but you have to look into, okay, can they really replace the player that actually made it in besides this player? So instead, an honorable mention will go to Michael Dixon uh, just because Fox is having a good year as well in Detroit. And then another honorable mention is Makai Becton. Makai Becton has been solid for the New York Jets. Yeah, gave gave up some uh, big plays here and there. He's a rookie, yeah, but uh, he's been solid. For the Jets, and that future is bright on that offensive line. Instead, Eric Fisher got in. Uh, Becton actually led fan voting uh, for the Pro Bowl, but he missed out because that's only one third of the Pro Bowl voting. And then the other two thirds goes to the players and the coaches. So Becton missed out. Fisher goes in, and I understand why Fisher went in. So that's why Becton is just an honorable mention. 
But here are eight players where you really can't make a big enough case to put them in over these Pro Bowl snubs. Starting off with number eight. Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver on the Atlanta Falcons, had 77 receptions, 1192 receiving yards, and nine total touchdowns. Very similar stats to Justin Jefferson, who had 73 receptions, 1182 in yards, and seven touchdowns. Four receptions less, 10 receiving yards less, and two touchdowns less. Those are the stats for Calvin Ridley compared to Justin Jefferson. So it's pretty close, and that's why Calvin Ridley is at our number eight spot. But you could make a case for Justin Jefferson, but if you want to just look at the stats alone in every category, receptions, yards, touchdowns, even if it's by a minimal amount, Calvin Ridley is still better in that area. So why didn't Calvin Ridley make it in over Justin Jefferson? That I do not understand, but Calvin Ridley is number eight on our Pro Bowl snub list. How about a punter on this show that we're going to be talking about? Corey Bohoquez of the Buffalo Bills. 50.1 average compared to Jake Bailey, who made it in for the AFC uh, roster at the punter position. 48.67. So he leads in the average over Jake Bailey. Now, Bailey, he's leading in one area over... Bohoquez, and that is that he had a better net average. But that's about it. Other than that, Bohoquez hasn't been punting a lot because the Bills just don't punt it a lot, and maybe that's why they a lot of people didn't vote him into the Pro Bowl, but he's well-deserving of it. As a matter of fact, he has a long of 72 yards this year. He had to punt that rolled for 72 yards, which is the uh, lead in the NFL, so he should have gotten in, I feel like, uh, over Jake Bailey. So he ranks in at number seven. Number six on our Pro Bowl snub list, Emmanuel Ogba, nine sacks versus Frank Clark, who had five sacks for the Kansas City Chiefs. So you couldn't make a case that Ogba deserved to get in over Frank Clark, but I believe that Clark is more of a household name. That's why many people might have voted for Clark over Ogba, but Ogba has been huge for that Dolphins defense and has been a key player on and, and key reason on why that Dolphins defense has been doing so well this year. And if you just look at the stats, the sacks alone, I mean, he's almost doubling the amount of sacks as Frank Clark. So comes in at number six on our Pro Bowl snub list. DeForest Buckner, number five, seven and a half sacks, 35 tackles. There are two players that we thought about putting him in over that actually made the Pro Bowl roster. There was Calais Campbell, who had four sacks and 27 tackles. But then there was also Casey Hayward, who may not have gotten a lot more sacks, but he's been a key player on that Pittsburgh defense. So if you want to talk about who's been key players and who hasn't been key players, Casey Hayward has been more of a key player to his defense than Calais Campbell has been to the Baltimore Ravens defense. So I decided that Buckner should be put in over Calais Campbell because the stats are right there that show that he's better. And... He's also made quite a bit of an impact as well for the Indianapolis Colts and ranking them in the top three as far as defense goes this season. Ryan Tannehill. How about Tannehill down in in Tennessee? Should have gotten in over Deshaun Watson. Controversial statement, but let me read off the stats. Let's start off with Tannehill. 3,400 yards passing, 31 touchdowns, five interceptions, four rushing touchdowns for Deshaun Watson. 4,100 yards passing, 27 touchdowns, and six interceptions. If you want to just look at touchdown to interception ratio, Tannehill by far has a much better uh, touchdown to interception ratio. 27 touchdowns to six interceptions compared to 31 to five. It's got to be Tannehill. Also, Watson only has three rushing touchdowns, so Tannehill is better on the ground as well with four rushing touchdowns. The passing yards is the only part of the game where Deshaun Watson has Tannehill beats. But other than that, if you want to talk about quarterbacks, you want to talk about, uh, I don't think it should factor in to a Pro Bowl or a player making the Pro Bowl, but if you want to talk about who's winning more, it's Ryan Tannehill. So I'm kind of confused on why Deshaun Watson uh, made it in over Ryan Tannehill for his second straight uh, Pro Bowl appearance. Number three, getting to the top three, Jason Sanders. The Miami Dolphins kicker should have gotten in over Justin Tucker. I do not understand why Justin Tucker made it in for the AFC Pro Bowl spot. I understand how accurate he is. I get it. But if you want to talk about who made more field goals, who uh, has been really killing it, and actually, as a matter of fact, 
has been pretty freaking accurate for their team as well. It's Jason Sanders. And you can talk about that in almost every category, including the most 50-yard field goals converted by any kicker this season. Jason Sanders has eight 50-yard field goals converted, 50-plus yard field goals. Justin Tucker, on the other hand, only has three. So even if Jason Sanders, you guys want to vote in Tucker over Jason Sanders, you want to make a case for him, I would have voted in someone like Daniel Carlson for the Las Vegas Raiders. Should have gotten in over Justin Tucker, and I feel like he just made it in because of his name value. Number two, Trey Hendrickson, the defensive end for the New Orleans Saints, quietly having a great season. 12 and a half sacks this season. Who should have gotten in over? How about his teammate? The defensive end, Cameron Jordan, had six and a half sacks this season. 12 and a half sacks versus six and a half sacks. Should have been Trey Hendrickson over his teammate, but Cameron Jordan obviously coming in with that name value. The name value is huge for this Pro Bowl voting and Pro Bowl roster uh, selection, including with our number one spot. So Evan Ingram made it in at the tight end position alongside TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson deserving of that tight end spot for the NFC. But Evan Ingram, only one touchdown this season. Who would have made it in, or who should have made it in, over Evan Ingram? Robert Tunyon for the Green Bay Packers. Should have made it in. Yeah, Ingram has more targets, more receptions, more yards. Cool. That's awesome. But Tunyon has more touchdowns, way more touchdowns. 10 touchdowns this season, and he didn't make it in? It's kind of confusing on why Evan Ingram made it in, and I feel like it's because he was the most familiar player uh, and people voted for him because of his name, which is kind of surprising, though, on why he made it in over someone like, yeah, you could say Tunyon because of his stats, but even someone like Rob Gronkowski on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who is a bigger name than Evan Ingram, who has slightly better stats than Evan Ingram this season. Why did Evan Ingram make it in? to that Pro Bowl roster. I do not understand that, and I think it should have been Robert Tunyon personally over Ingram. But those are our Pro Bowl snubs, and if you if you guys have any more snubs that you want to list, that you want to name, comment. Let us know, because there's a lot of players out there that were deserving of Pro Bowl spot, and unfortunately, there's only a certain amount of spots that can be handed out, but we feel like those were the top eight that should have gotten in into the Pro Bowl. To wrap up the show, we've got fantasy football questions for your fantasy football championship. Hey, some of you guys are even playing for third place. Some of you guys are playing in the constellation bracket, and that's okay. Your league does different it does different things on how you reward players, and a lot of you guys really don't want last place, or you guys just want to be ranked better. I know our league personally, the better you do in your league, in our league, the better rank you get, the better draft position you have for next season. So there's still something to play for if you didn't make the championship here in week 16. But for you guys that did, congratulations. Hopefully these questions can help you guys out. This first one is from Omar Ruiz. Who should I start, Cup or McLaurin? Got to go with McLaurin. Got to go with McLaurin. Because the track record with McLaurin with Haskins versus him with Alex Smith is much better. And I don't know exactly who's going to be starting this week, but I feel like it's going to be Dwayne Haskins, even though he's under a lot of fire recently with the uh, whole going maskless at, at, at the strip club. Forget the strip club part. It's him going maskless. That's uh, really the big deal. But McLaurin has a much higher, a much better track record with Haskins. So if Haskins were to play, you've got to start McLaurin. Better matchup. Cup is just on and off, hit or miss. It's going to be him. It's going to be Robert Woods, who's going to get the hot hand. And uh, I would... Put my trust in Terry McLaurin for your championship. This next one is from Yazan O. Russell Wilson or Baker Mayfield? Can't believe I even have to make this decision. That's, uh, it, yeah, it's gotten to that point. It, it really has. Wilson, it, he was going to be in the MVP conversation for the first six, seven, eight weeks. He just sizzled down, and it just hasn't been looking great for the Seahawks offense. And uh, for fantasy football purposes, Russell Wilson could, may have costed some people some games, but it may, he may have won some games as well. So you can't really blame him. As for Baker Mayfield, he's been on hot streak as of late. 
with that game against the Tennessee Titans, with another game that he had against the New York Giants just last week, and how about the game of the week, uh, the game of the year candidate against the Baltimore Ravens? I would still put my trust in Russell Wilson. However, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bench someone with as much upside as Russell Wilson, who has proven has proven to be a better quarterback in general than Baker Mayfield. Even though Baker Mayfield is red hot, even though Mayfield may have the better matchup, I would put my trust in Russell Wilson because you got to think about it against the Jets. The Browns could be up big, meaning they could pass it less. And they could just run it out with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. So I would go with Russell Wilson over Baker Mayfield. Interesting question, but it I understand why you would ask. This one from G. Garcia. Need help for the championship. Congratulations, by the way. Robbie Anderson, Brandon Cooks, or Le'Veon Bell as my flex. Who should I start? Le'Veon Bell faces Atlanta Falcons defense that has not been the a lot of people don't run over them. I'll just say that. They're actually pretty good in stopping the run. I believe against running backs, they are ranked in the top 10 uh, in fantasy football. Robbie Anderson. I, I have Teddy Bridgewater as a must-sit this week against the Washington football team just because of that defensive line. And even though the secondary is kind of sketch for, for, the, for the football team, I wouldn't trust any Carolina Panther at this point against that defense. So instead, I'm going to go with Brandon Cooks, who has proven to be consistent prior to his injury. Every week, probably one of the more underrated players in fantasy football was Brandon Cooks, who really stepped in and, and was a solid wide receiver, too, for many of you throughout the duration of the fantasy football season. Doug Lacey. Okay, so I have Dana Carlson. Should I be worried? Sly, Blankenship are available, but Carlson is pretty consistent. Yeah, Carlson is consistent, but it's only eight or nine fantasy points that he gets every single week. Now, that's good. Like His standard deviation is amazing. Like he's always going to be hitting around that window. But yeah, I mean, you should be a little bit worried that he's not going to bring you 10, 11, 12 points. If you want to play it safe, I would go with Carlson. I mean, I know Blankenship is one of those hit or miss kind of guys as well with the Colts as of late. But Blankenship might be your best option. And uh, Sly, I, I completely have him as a sit. I want to even think about him. But I would go with Blankenship over Carlson if you need need to take a big risk. If you need consistently consistency, you know that you need just eight points for your matchup, just need a safe floor, then Daniel Carlson is a guy, but personally, I would go with blanket chip. Next one from Kobe B. Help, Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts for the chip. Congratulations, by the way. Josh Allen would be my choice, and I don't care what the matchup is, and I don't care if Jalen Hurts has been looking great the last couple of weeks. It's going to be Josh Allen as your fantasy football quarterback that's going to lead you to a championship. Because, listen, Hurts, we still have the unpredictability of him being a rookie. Anything could happen. He could be just on a hot streak for two games, and then all of a sudden, this next week, seven fantasy points. It could happen. It really could against the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, even though I don't really predict it to happen, Josh Allen is the much safer option and could actually put up some big numbers as well. Lex Jam. I see you commenting a lot, Lex Jam. Should I play Miami defense? Absolutely. I don't know who the quarterback is going to be, whether it's going to be Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota. You got to play him. Even in tough matchups, you got to play the Miami Dolphins. The only exception probably would be the uh, maybe the Buffalo Bills or the Kansas City Chiefs, but the Raiders, they're not in that tier of, be- of having an offense as good as those teams. So any other defense? Yeah, I would play the uh, Miami Dolphins, but... Uh, You can have full trust in the Dolphins' defense this week against the Raiders. Uh, Let's go with one more. We've got Reynoso Ivan asking, Russell Wilson or Ryan Tannehill? I think I chose this one because I wanted to give you some uh, feedback as far as Russell Wilson goes. So uh, we talked about about Wilson earlier about how he hasn't been the best, has kind of dipped down in production as of late. In this scenario, because of that, I'm going to go with Ryan Tannehill, who's been proven to be a solid fantasy football quarterback one. I mean, you want to talk about a guy that has two two games with five touchdowns total. I believe it's five games with three touchdowns and four rushing touchdowns on the year. There's four games this season that he's had with over 26 fantasy points. Ryan Tannehill is ranked 7th at his position. My sleeper of the week against the Green Bay Packers on Sunday Night Football. I would start Tannehill, trust in him, much more than I would trust in Russell Wilson. I don't think I would have 
ever said that sentence two years ago, but Tannehill is a guy that can lead you to a fantasy football championship for sure. And that are your fantasy football questions going into this amazing week of fantasy football. The last week for some of you. Sad day. But hopefully you guys can win that fantasy football championship. And that brings us to the end of our video. If you guys enjoyed this show, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with more videos throughout the week. We've got much more content for you guys besides just fantasy football. So make sure you guys subscribe to us and stay tuned with us throughout the whole entire duration of the football season, whether it be the postseason and the Super Bowl as well. Also, if you guys are listening to us on the audio experience, appreciate you guys. Be sure to rate and review and uh, tell all your friends about it and head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash time to football. Subscribe to us on there and watch all of our video content on there as well. But we appreciate you guys joining us for uh, this Christmas edition of Time to Football. Thank you guys for taking the uh, time. I know you guys got a lot going on, but it is week 16 of the 2020 NFL season, and Adam Gase is still the head coach of the New York Jets. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you next week.